Well, hello, crime stuffers. Let's take a look at some of this fun stuff here. One thing that happens when you make as many wild, unproven claims as Trump does is that the people around you have to go to increasingly ridiculous lengths to try to defend those claims. And this weekend we saw another example of that when White House Counselor Kellyanne Conway was asked if she had any proof for Trump's outlandish claim that Obama wiretapped him during the campaign and offered this bizarre answer. How does he bizarre. know that, that, it, that his phone was actually tapped? Let me answer that globally. He's the president of the United States. He has information and intelligence that the rest of us do not. You know what? Yeah, I'll, I'll agree with that. Trump has intelligence that I definitely do not. <laughs> I agree. Listen, people, w one more time. Trump's accusation is ridiculous and pathetic. He is suggesting a U.S. president propaganda, enlisted a foreign intelligence service to spy on a political adversary. That is an explosive charge. This is a serious propaganda. allegation. This might be the most serious allegation yeah. any president has made against... This used to be my hero, and now I hope he dies in the fire. It's the previous president. But this is a very serious allegation for a sitting president to make about his predecessor. Trump tweeted, terrible, just found out that... And this fucking pedophile protector, to put it mildly and nicely, uh, also needs to die in a fire. You're going to see in the future what happens to these people. Obama had my wires tapped in Trump Tower just before the victory. Nothing found. This is McCarthyism. And the other one, how low has President Obama gone to tap my phones during the very sacred election process, you this is Nixon Watergate, bad or sick guy. He said Obama is either a bad or sick guy. Maybe he means him as compliments, like, yeah, man, he's bad. He's a bad guy. <laughs> the NSA's deputy director told the and BBC you, it was arrogant nonsense, revealing a complete lack of understanding in how the relationship works. <laughs> And for their part, GCHQ called the accusations utterly ridiculous. And yet, rather than distancing himself from Spicer, Trump decided to back him up. Are you asking, did I wiretap Donald Trump? Of course, I did it. <laughs> How low has President Obama gone to tap p -p my phones <laughs> during the very sacred election process? This is You're Nixon this humorous, slash Watergate. Hello? Hey, Barack. Sorry, we have to investigate you on this wiretapping thing. But you know I didn't do that. I know, but we still have to investigate it. Otherwise, it'll look like I'm just mentally unstable. The craziest thing about Trump calling for an investigation without any evidence, zero evidence, Trump has not produced a shred of evidence. There was no evidence for Trump's claims. The, there was, the evidence did not come. So where did Trump get his info? From the CIA? From the FBI? Where are you getting this information? From a very reputable source. What, the FBI, the CIA? InfoWars, it's a radio show hosted by Alex Jones. <laughs> you know he's legit. <laughs> okay, now to this. Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. Today, more than 30 oh. Democratic senators remanded Look, Senator Alfred Franklin. So to the right place. At the FBI. There you go. I don't remember his exact title, but I believe that's correct. And he's the same Peter Strzok who was a key player in the Clinton investigation, the same Peter Strzok who interviewed Cheryl Mills, whom Abedin participated in the Clinton, uh, Secretary Clinton's interview. And he's also the same Peter Strzok who now, you know, changed Gosh. Director Comey's exoneration letter, changed the term gross negligence, which is a crime, to extreme carelessness. Is that the same guy? Well, Congressman, I don't know every step that uh, the individual you mentioned was involved in, but oh, certainly right. I know that he was heavily involved in the uh, Clinton and investigation. Thank you. Like and is, is it the same Peter Strzok who helped, uh, was a key player in the Russian investigation and the same Peter Strzok who was put on Mueller's team, uh, special counsel Bob Mueller's team? I certainly know that he was working on the special counsel's investigation. Whether or not he would be characterized as in a key same, player on that investigation, that's okay, really not the, for me to say. And the same Peter Strzok that we learned this past weekend was removed from the special counsel team because he exchanged text messages with a colleague at the FBI that were displayed a pro-Clinton bias. Is that accurate? Yes. Talk about the same guy. Okay. Yes. Well, right. Here's what I'm not let's, getting. Let's skip. Peter Strzok. And respond. I do not believe that I can legally and appropriately share a FISA court Perfect. submission with this committee. I'm talking about what the FBI put together, not what the court had. What, what you took there, what was the, the process put together, what you presented, what you took to the court. When, when I sign FISA applications, which I have to do almost every day of the week, they are all covered with a classified information cover. So that's part of why. Right, so is, it that Peter Strzok, is it likely that Peter Strzok? Is it likely that Peter Strzok played a part in the application presented to the FISA court? The gentleman's time has expired. However, I do want to follow up on your last response to the gentleman. This committee, the House Judiciary Committee, has primary jurisdiction over the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court. Uh, so any request for documents coming uh, to any part of the Congress 
should include the House Judiciary Committee. And if it uh, uh, is classified in any way, shape, or form, it can be provided to us uh, in a classified setting. But uh, that is information that we are very much interested in. Mr. Chairman. Very much want to receive. There's a question to you, the Chairman. Yeah, I don't think there's anything prohibiting the FBI from giving us what they use to put together what was taken to the FISA court. That's what we're asking for. And there is nothing prohibiting him from right doing that. I don't think there is either. Time of the gentleman has expired, however. You care to respond to that? Director Gray? No, I think I've covered it. Wait, one more time. One, one, one more time. Justified in any way, shape, or form. From giving us what they used to put together what was taken to the FISA court. That's what we're asking for. And there is nothing prohibiting him from doing that. I don't think there is either. Time of the gentleman has expired, however. You care to respond to that? Director Gray? No, I think I've covered it. Of course not. Now, what do we got? Back in the day. Okay. So, uh, because I'm running way too much stuff here on this handy little computer, uh, I'm going to stop now. But I think you get the point. I think you understand just how badly you've been propagandized. I hope you understand the fact that the pedophilia hasn't even come to fore yet and all this other stuff. I mean, the bottom line, pedophilia, bottom line, pedophilia, bottom line, pedophilia. How many of them are guilty of it? Uh, I don't think you can shake your finger at enough of them. Uh, Republicans, definitely. Democrats, definitely. In fact, I think there's more Democrats than Republicans, actually. Well, what's, what's that right there? What, what symbol is that right there? I'm not good enough for you. Um, two ball cane? Two ball cane. If you don't know what two ball cane is, I suggest you, uh, look up what two ball cane is. And oh, by the way, this says signs and symbols rule the world, not words, nor law. By your symbols, you shall know them. Or by their symbols, you shall know them. Oh, look. Oh, what, what symbol is that? What symbol is that? What, what, what and look, it's everywhere. Oh, wait, uh, you get the idea. Uh, all these down here, you can't see the symbols, but the symbol is right there, right below it, right? Every, right? Um... Hmm. Maybe I can pick this thing up and move it around. Let's see here. Can I? And the short answer is no. All right. But uh, look, there's uh, Alabama. There is Colorado. If you come down here, this is Iowa. Um, should be pretty clear. Now, most Masons haven't a clue. Trust me. Just like the average sheep that sits there and watches and laughs at late night television and has no idea what's going on. The average police officer and the average Mason has no idea what these symbols stand for and what goes on in some Masonic temples. And this is the other thing, not all Masonic temples. Some Masons are bright, upstanding, you know, Shriners and help out their community and would never sacrifice a child to Satan and would never be part of the cabal and would never, none of that because they're good people. But I'll tell you what, there's more than a few Satanists at the top of uh, some of the Masonic organizations. In fact, part of their... Well, I'll stop there. Anyway, the idea is uh, the Masons, like anybody else, uh, there are good people and bad people. Uh, our government, uh, there are good people and bad people. Certainly not every single person in the government is uh, sacrificing children, uh, but more than a few. More, more than you need, uh, and if it's one, it's too many, like I've said many, many times. But if you think you're going to call law enforcement on these people, <laughs> uh, no, no, you're not. Um, I can't begin to stress enough that the tide has turned and that it won't be long. E pluribus unum. Educate self, educate others.